Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. For the simplicity of understanding and also taking the cue from our Prime Minister's pension for acronyms, let's call this the Base Effect Budget, B-A-S-E. Or it might be more apt to borrow from that Salman Khan film, Sultan I think it was, and describe this as a case of BGP ko base pasand hai. Base in this case stands for four things, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Socialism and Employment. Before we dive deeper into the political messages in the 2024 Union Budget, however, we must underline the imperative never to separate politics from economics. They always go together. While so much newsprint space and airtime is spent analyzing the financial, fiscal and taxation aspects of the Union Budget, it's the most important political statement the government makes in an entire year. If, if the, it speaks not just of the political economy, but also shows where the government is headed and where it's coming from. The latter is more important than former in this year's budget, where the government's coming from. Play Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman's speech again. For the first 25 minutes, she speaks almost entirely about Andhra Pradesh and Bihar. If you think that's too much time, nearly one-fourth of the entire speech on two states out of the 28 in the union, you risk overlooking the political message. What is that political message? It is that the 10 budgets of the Modi governments so far were BJP budgets. This is their first coalition budget. This is their first NDA budget. That's why so much time and money is allocated to just these two states, accounting for less than 15% of India's population. Both were divided in the past, as we know, and both shed their lucrative revenue generating zones. Bihar shed Jharkhand, its mineral rich zone. In Telangana, Hyderabad, which was, which was its big metro city. That's why they've both been asking for special status. Nobody listened to them. But now, without their 28 seats, TDP, Andhra, 16 seats, and JDU Bihar, 12, the NDA would fall, fall into a minority. This is called leverage. These 25 minutes and the tens of thousands of crores promised tangibly come alongside much else not yet translated into money, medical colleges, airports, expressways, and completing a nearly abandoned mega hydro project, that's Polavram in Andhra Pradesh, are intangible but substantive. The first big political statement, therefore, is a confession. Unlike the other two, our third is a coalition government. The other two were BJP governments. This is a coalition government. That's why this accounts for A and B in our base formulation. Andhra Pradesh and Bihar. If there's anything the budget lacks in, in fact, it's economic messaging. There are no wide statements of reform, no mention of privatization, disinvestment, no big tax cuts, incentives, deregulation. Apart from welcome fiscal discipline, there is also the reformist withdrawal of the devilishly named angel tax. That's a good thing. This is, however, probably our only budget in about two and a half decades that does not mention the government reducing its presence in business. Compare this with the Modi government's statement of intent in mid-pandemic reform flurry when it promised that the state would get out of all businesses except some minimal presence in strategic sectors. That idea lies buried in the debris of the indifferent outcome for the BJP of the Lok Sabha elections. That's a political reality now. Searching under the miscellaneous receipts column, we find a mere 50,000 crores on the disinvestment count. Year after year, Modi governments have failed to achieve their targets from disinvestment. PSU share sales, by the way, not privatization. The only substantive privatization since 2014 has been Air India and the idea that any PSUs would be sold now or privatized is fully off the table now. 
On the contrary, the government has budgeted for 2.9 lakh crores, rupees 2.9 trillion from Reserve Bank of India and PSU dividends. Don't distract me with talk of milch cows when the government believes it owns such a formidable gaushala. This government is allocating trillions to incentivize the private sector to employ people through subsidies and subventions to be administered by by the state at various points of time. The process is complex enough to justify another bhavan, if not two coming up in New Delhi. Because this kind of state intervention will require an entire inspectorate or a bureaucracy. This is in fact a most remarkable state intervention in job creation. In the real world, however, do businesses hire more just because the government may underwrite some fraction of that cost? Businesses hire when they see profits and growth and in a more free market, in a freer market, a reformed economy, the government would help by creating infrastructure, deregulation, moderate taxation, rule of law, and whatever it takes to make that possible. It's a naive and garden variety socialist state thinking that it can drive up employment by offering incentives for hiring. Remember I said garden variety socialist state. We could in fact have started this analysis with the S word for socialism because that is the overwhelming political message of this budget. There are minor tax cuts, just about 17,500 rupees per year being the highest for the lower slab taxpayers. But there is a definite move towards the European style soak the rich approach. Capital gains taxes have gone up across the board. And an increase to 12.5% from 10 is not an increase of 2.5%. It's an increase, by the way, of 25% over base. The short term capital gains tax has gone up from 15% to 20%. So that raise is even higher by 33%, that is from 15 to 20%. And the withdrawal of indexation benefit on property by implication retrospective also takes you to European style socialist taxation. What it does also is, as some experts have said, this might, this carries the danger of bringing cash back into property transactions. I hope not, but that is an apprehension that people who are well informed are now expressing. Added to the state funded internship program and the incentive to employers, ideas we saw in the Congress parties self avowedly and unapologetically socialist manifesto. These ideas originally featured in the Congress manifesto. And you would then be safe to conclude that in its 11th year, the BJP has brought us back to a hard truth. And what is that hard truth? That whatever the other ideological arguments in our politics, socialism remains our national, bipartisan, economic ideology. There was much clamor at one point of time that if the BJP returned with a super majority, it would at least take out that emergency era insertion of secular and socialist from the preamble of our constitution. This was, by the way, inserted by Mrs. Gandhi in an illegitimate parliament, a parliament in its sixth year. You can now be sure that no such thing is going to happen. This budget proves that the BJP now accepts that socialism is the third letter S in our base proposition. And the E at the end is obviously employment. The cash being thrown at it also tells us that this budget is a political statement of a leadership that has spent too much time reflecting on why it came up so short in the elections. Reflecting, brooding. That's why the budget is so low on the usual breezy talk of the future. The BJP's think tank is still bogged down over what went wrong, how to prevent further damage. Like every other government, like every other political party and formulation in our history, it has leaned back on distributive socialism when seriously challenged. And before I let you go, can I add a little postscript? I must give credit where it's due. The base formulation, BASE, Bihar, Andhra, Socialism, Employment. This was thought of by the print Deputy Editor for Economics, TCA Sharad Raghavan. I happily borrowed the idea from him.